Hi guys and welcome back to my course. In the previous video, we added an on click listener to our like button and it shows an alert whenever the like buttons click. So as you can see here, and now we also want to know which block cards like button was clicked. So one way is we can pass the position as props to the card. And when calling the function, we can pass that value as an argument to that function. So let's give it a try. So coming here to your objects. So this is where we are creating the block card component. So we can also pass the position. So let's say position is equal to plus. So if you check your console log where we are printing the props for the block card. So you also have this another key position. Similarly, if you open the third one, so the position is two. So we're getting the current position. So to access it, we can simply do props dot position. So coming here. So now if you do props dot position, so this value will get passed to the function as an argument. But the problem with this statement is this is a function call syntax. So whenever we run this code, it will automatically run the functions. So as you can see, we've got one, two, and three alerts. So the solution for this is we can create an anonymous function, which returns this function call. So as simple as this. So now when we save it, we don't see those alerts by default. So this like button click, which is this function will also get an argument position. So instead of just showing like button click, we can also say add position and we can add the value here. So let's check it out. So now when I click on the first one, we get add position zero. When I click on the second one, we get add position one. And when we click on the last one, we get add position two. So this was one way. Now, another way is passing the position value to the function when the components are generated. So instead of passing just the reference, we can do the same thing which we did here. So we create an anonymous function which returns the function call. So it would be this. And instead of passing reference, this would be a function call where we can pass the position and then we won't have to pass this position props. So coming back here. So now over here, we don't need the arrow function. So we can simply pass the reference of that function, which was passed here. So again, if we check our console. So as you can see, we still have this on like button click. Similarly for this one. And similarly for this one. And if you click on this button, you still get those values. Okay, so let me quickly give you a recap of what's happening here. So earlier we were passing a reference here, but now what we're doing is we're passing an anonymous function, which just returns a function call. So which is this and in that function call, we can pass the position which is being passed to this unlike button click function where we are showing the alert. And how is it this being used in our component? So a component gets this anonymous function. So this props dot on like button click will be the anonymous function. So whenever the button is clicked, it calls the anonymous function, which in turn calls this function call. And this executes this piece of code. And that's why you're getting the alert with correct values. Now the question is, how do we update the like count for individual block card component? We can simply get the array from state and update object for that specific position. So let's give it a try. So now we don't need this alert. So let's just remove it. Let's create a constant, say updated blog list. We can get the array from our state. So this dot state. And the name of array is blog array. And if you notice, this blog array is not inside our state. 
So if you simply do this dot blog array, and if you update it, it will update this variable, which has nothing to do with the state. It's just a local variable. So if you just update this value, it will update the local variable and it will not call the render method. But we want to do that. We want to call the render method. So that's why we need to put this inside the state object. So coming here, so let's put this array inside. So instead of this equals to sign, this would be colon. And to access it, we can simply do this dot state dot blog array. Now even this code needs to get refactored. So we've got two occurrences of this dot blog array. Let's replace them with this dot state dot blog array. So as you can see, now this blog array is coming from the state. Let's just save it and check if everything's working fine. And as you can see, we're still getting our objects. So coming back to our code, now we've got access to the blogs array. But what we want is the object of the blog card, which was clicked. So let's create another variable, say updated blog object. So we can select it from our updated list at position. So this will give us that object. Let's try printing it first. So update, sorry, there's a typo here. So updated blog object. So updated blog object. Let's save it and let's check it. So when we click on the second one, as you can see, the object with ID2 is getting printed. So even the title is blog title2, which means it was the second card. So we're getting the correct card from the list. Now all we have to do is update this like count. So let's give that a try. So update blog object is equal to update blog object dot like count plus one. So this would be update blog object dot like count. So this will update our object and we can update the array with this updated object. So updated blog list at position is equal to updated blog object. So this line of code will put the updated object in the same position from where we retrieved it. So now our blog list array is updated with the latest values. So we can use the set state method to update it. So the name of our blog array is blog array and we can pass this updated value there. So updated blog list and this should do the job. Let's save it, let's check it out. So now when I click on this one, as you can see, render is getting called, but our card is not getting updated. And if you open the first one, even the like count is just zero. So something is clearly not right. So let's see what's wrong here. So let's try printing the state. So coming back to our render method. So instead of just printing render called, let's also print our state. So this dot state. So now when I click on this first one, so our state is printed. Let's check the first object. As you can see, the like count is one. So the like count is getting updated. Similarly, if we call it if we click on this again, so as you can see, the like count is two. So if you notice, this this dot block cards is holding our rendered block list, which is outside the render method. So even though the state is getting updated, even though the render function is getting called, but it doesn't compute this local variable again. So if we want to get updated blog cards, we will have to put this piece of code inside a render function. So let's do that. So now if I put it here, so because it's inside this render function, so we will have to use const or let. And instead of this dot blog cards, we can simply use it. Let's save it and let's check it out. So now when I click here, as you can see, the like count is increasing. Same goes for the second card and same goes for the third card. Just a quick tip, 
a stateless component can have stateful components inside it and vice versa. I hope this gave you a better understanding of passing functions as props. But if you have any doubts or queries, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter. I'll add my Twitter handle in the description below. See you in the next video. Bye and take care.